Thomas Segovia, a U.S. citizen who lives in Guam with his family, served an 18-month tour in Iraq with the U.S. Army, a 12-month tour in Afghanistan with the Illinois National Guard, and a 10-month tour in Afghanistan with the Guam National Guard. In Iraq, he helped provide security for the 2005 Iraqi elections. He was deployed on his second tour to Afghanistan just months after the United States 2012 presidential elections, in which he was unable to vote for his own president. Louis Segovia was willing to give his life for his country. He fought to protect Iraqi citizens' right to vote, but back home in America, Louis, along with four million residents of the American territories of Guam, Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands and the Northern Mariana Islands were denied their right to vote. A soldier with no say over who his commander in chief will be. A citizen subjected to taxation without representation. And a man with no influence over the laws which he must follow. The U.S. Constitution is the bedrock foundation of each American's liberty. And the right to vote is what gives liberty a voice. Today, however, I would like to talk with you about an interpretation of the Constitution which has silenced the voices of over four million Americans like you and me by denying them that very right. The Insular cases were handed down by the U.S. Supreme Court during a period referred to by historians as the zenith of American empire from 1901 to 1922. They confirmed Congress's ability to rule Guam, Puerto Rico, and other newly acquired lands as colonies without the possibility of statehood by establishing what is known as the Territorial Incorporation Doctrine. The Supreme Court had determined that all territories acquired from 1787 to 1898, including Alaska and Hawaii, were incorporated to be treated as states in waiting with their residents entitled to the full privileges and immunities of citizenship and their destiny to be full participation in America's national elections. However, the Spanish colonies acquired after 1898 were islands said by the Supreme Court to be, quote, inhabited by alien races, to be treated as unincorporated territories, foreign in the domestic sense, and were to be owned by the United States government and governed as possessions, end quote. As important as the 15th, 19th, 24th, and 26th Amendments to the Constitution have been for securing voting rights for most Americans, it is impossible to understate the role racial hostility played in these incorrect decisions, which came about even after the 15th Amendment was adopted. Justice Edward White, a former Confederate soldier, at one time captured by the Union Army during the Civil War, invented that territorial incorporation doctrine. Edward White publicly stated he did this because, quote, we couldn't incorporate 10 million black-skinned people like that in the United States. Think what the consequences would be, end quote. 120 years later, a law built upon those words still stands. The Insular cases misinterpreted the U.S. Constitution and effectively overturned precedent going all the way back to the Northwest Ordinance of 1787, that once a newly acquired American territory had a population of 60,000 people and achieved a Republican form of government, then that territory would, if requested by the people of the land, be admitted by Congress into the Union as a new state quote, on equal footing with the original states, end quote. After the insular cases, the unincorporated territories were never destined for statehood. No matter how high their population became, what form of government they chose to adopt, or the majority vote requesting for statehood time and time again. The insular cases changed the meaning of the term the United States to include territories whom we were willing to tax, but not grant any constitutional protections. One of the most illogical results of the Insular Cases is that any U.S. citizen, 
born of or residing in an American territory, can run for president and become our executive, our commander in chief, yet they are unable to vote for themselves or another candidate. America's unincorporated territories are the only places in the entire universe where US citizens cannot vote for president under Article 2 or members of Congress under Article 1. Pursuant to the Uniformed and Overseas Citizens Absentee Voting Act, US citizens who move from one of the 50 states to a foreign nation or even to outer space to serve on the International Space Station, they can still vote. However, if a US citizen moves within the United States to Guam, Puerto Rico, the US Virgin Islands or the Northern Mariana Islands, they lose their right to vote for as long as they reside there. Because of the insular cases, Americans and the territories exist in what a dissenting justice called the disembodied shade of limbo status. Existing, but not heard from. Present, but not represented. Four million Americans all live in an alternate dimension of disenfranchisement. Louis Segovia and other US military servicemen have filed multiple cases in federal court attempting to win that right to vote, but have lost each time. However, last spring, US Supreme Court Justices Gorsuch and Sotomayor both said, quote, the insular cases rest on a rotten foundation of ugly racial stereotypes and are odious and wrong, end quote. Justice Gorsuch noted, quote, the flaws in the insular cases are as fundamental as they are shameful. Nothing in the Constitution speaks of incorporated or unincorporated territories. Nothing in it authorizes judges to engage in segregating territories or the people who live in them on the basis of race, ethnicity, or religion." End quote. We're not alone in recognizing this long-standing injustice and calling for a reform. There is a beacon of light shining through the storm moving the tides of the Supreme Court to overturn the insular cases. We need only to follow that light to the shores of liberty. The US Constitution holds within her words our most cherished guarantees of liberty and equality, yet its words are not enough. They must be correctly interpreted to do justice for us all. The Constitution was not meant to permit the creation of permanent unincorporated territories subject to the absolute power of the federal government, but has been wrongly interpreted to do so. Fortunately, America's Constitution has overcome numerous wrong interpretations over the past two centuries. From Plessy v. Ferguson, justifying racial segregation, to Minor v. Happersett, preventing women like me from having the ability to vote. But more remains to be done because the insular cases are still with us. The Equally American Project is presently working to appeal Louis Segovia and other US military servicemen's cases up to the Supreme Court. The insular cases must be overturned. No US citizen who has willingly fought for our country to defend democracy should be denied the right to participate in that process when they return home. No US citizen should have taxation without representation because that's what our forefathers fought against 248 years ago. And it's every bit as unjust now as it was then. The most undeniable human inclination is our desire to communicate. To use our voices to speak out against injustice and to rise together over adversity. And when someone has fallen in the fight, to shout out into the night for the rest to come and save them. Four million Americans like you and me are calling out. They're calling out, but they've yet to be heard. So who will give them their voice? When will we all speak out, rise together, and grant those the rights they too have fought for and deserve? Thank you.